Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today, like the, the title says, we're going to make a piano key border. I told you on Sunday I would be on. Didn't know what time, didn't know what day, that I would just go live when I'm ready to make a piano key border for my giant pineapple block quilt. So I'm going to let it sit for a second people to find my video. I know that there are several content creators live right now. I figured why not because there's like a lot really that I watch that I know other people watch so I'm pretty sure everyone's going to just play the bounce around game while I'm live. So we'll just do it anyway. Um, hi Priscilla. Hi Melena. Hi Kathy. Tanya. Kathy D. Lydia, Donna, Brenda, Judy, Beverly, Glenda. Hello, hello, friends. Tracy, um, Peg, Pat, Diane, Shirley. All right. Kiani, March, Janice, Catherine. Everybody's finding it. Jacqueline, Lenny, or is it? I can't see. Jean, Jenny. That's Jenny. Um, Lynn, Chris, Sandra, Karen. Hello, hello. So we made, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Can I have a water, Scotty? Yes, yeah, of course. Please. On Sunday, um, I made a giant pineapple quilt. Sorry, I'm trying to fix this stuff too at the same time. I made this giant pineapple block, which is a quilt, all in one. So this is what I made on Sunday, and then I put the first border on, but I said I would come back to show you guys how to make a piano key border on a quilt like this. So what we're going to do is use only, ouch, I just like punched the desk. What we're going to do is use only the strips that are left behind that did not get used up when piecing the top. Hey, <laughs> that's my kitty kitty. All right, I'm going to just throw this stuff up more higher. So with only the pieces that I have left, I shall make a piano key border using two and a half inch strips. All right. So what I'm going to do is... I got the short pieces left. Those were from using the most of the strip, the semi most of the strip, or these medium length ones. Then there's a little bit longer from using even more, or even less, I should say, of a piece of a strip. So there's this size. Then there's, I'm elbowing the desk now. Then there's this size from more of the ones that are towards the center. And then there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten full strips left. Huh? How big is the pineapple thing do we know? I forgot from the other day. I think it's like 40 something. I'm going to lay it over here on the ironing board for now. But I'm pretty sure it's 40 something. I only need to measure one side because it's completely square. So it's 48 and a half. That's what it was from adding that first border, which is my stop border. And then we're gonna put the piano key border on. So it was 48 and a half. So what I need to do is with all of these wonderful scraps here, I'm gonna sew all these size ones together then I'm going to sew all these size ones together, then this size, then this size, and then my long strips. And then we're going to subcut them. And whatever I have left over, because I know that this will be plenty, whatever I have left over is going to go in the final, final scrap pile because <laughs> I'm going to use all this up. So what I'm going to do is sew them together in sets of two to chain piece. Why? Because it saves on thread, it saves on time, it saves on saving on. That's what it does. It saves on saving on. <laughs> so I'm just going to 
sew these together in sets of two. And I'm going to sew them from the selvage down because that, that way I know that it's starting out straight and then I can make my cuts from there. And it would help to have a bigger stitch length because I was paper piecing. Just so you guys know, tomorrow is another Sculliver video. I always end up leaving the machine at that certain number when I'm done recording, um, filming a paper piecing. <laughs> So I'm just running these through in sets of two. I am trying to mix them up a little bit because I don't want all the same colors next to each other. That would just be weird in a, in a piano key border. We're putting a piano key border on a pineapple quilt. It's a PP quilt. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I know I'm weird. <laughs> Pine, pineapple piano. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know I'm weird and I think of silly things and I say silly things and I do silly things. It's all right. We love you. Yep. You just say that. Oh, that's my line. That's <laughs> my line. So, hopefully everybody is having a lovely day today. I have a migraine-ish. I took medicine. It's starting to fade because I, I have, um, what is it called again? Nurtec is my medicine for my migraine. So it's starting to ease up, which is a good thing because I absolutely can't stand migraines. Another thing that's new that came in yesterday's mail is what my butt is on. Oh, yeah. So the other, not la was it last week? Not this Sunday, but the previous Sunday, I auctioned off some little quilts so that I can buy myself something. My birthday is coming up literally in two weeks, but I couldn't wait to have a nice, comfy butt. So I have a nice, comfy butt chair for me. <laughs> so that is what I bought with the money I raised from auctioning off a couple quilts as myself a chair to cushion my fanny. <laughs> so I'm hoping that it helps with long times of sitting here at the machine. It seems very comfortable so far. And Scott even said it was comfortable. So uh, right now they are undetermined sizes. I'm just sewing the pieces together. Yes, it's a very comfortable chair. It, it was on sale at Walmart. Well, actually, it's not called a sale. It's called a rollback. <laughs> I don't know why they call it a rollback. Because they rolled the price back like an itsy bitsy amount. <laughs> but anyways, yes, I got a new chair for my fanny. Because I've been complaining for a long time that other chair that I had was so hard. So hard. Nobody liked sitting in it. Even me. So now I have a new chair. So that's what me and Scott put together yesterday. Was a new chair to protect my bum from going numb while sewing. All right. The next set of them. I'm trying to like pair them up, like I said, because just pairing them up in twos. Oh, there's going to be one left over of this one. Fine then. I'll just throw you over there. And you can be a single, actually. You know, I'm going to hook to something. So I'm just sewing quarter inch seam. Selvage, starting at the selvage end. That way they can all get cut equally. And 
I'm going to find the start somewhere around here. There it is. You want to use your little cutter, purple thing? I'm going to find the start and then I'm going to snip them apart and sew them into fours. So I'm just going to finger press it back and sew into fours. You started with one jelly roll, right? Yes, I started with one jelly roll and I'll be able to have made the whole top so far and the border. <laughs> I'm now pulling them apart to chain piece in sets of two of the smaller length pieces. It doesn't really matter which way you press all the seams as long as, you know, they're flat, but I'm not really press pressing them yet. I'll do that at the iron when I'm ready. Two more of that shorter length. I'm kind of just finger pressing them for now. I can iron. You want me to iron them? Um, in a minute, I'll I'll just do it. Are those the same length? Yes, they are. <clears throat> so right now I'm just kind of finger pressing them out of the way. Sort of. Sort of. In sets of four. Okay, and two of these super long, that's not that super long, that's shorter. So this one will go. And I'm pretty sure, like super positive, this is going to be enough to go all the way around. So there's all these so far in sets of fours. So now they just need to be pressed. Can I turn the iron on? Please. Move this. Oh. Yep. And now I'm going to start sewing. And I'm going to leave this one in a two because I'm still cutting it either way. Um, oh, just throw it over the end over there on the end. I'm going to take these now. And just so that I have a good variety mixed up, I'm going to snip them all exactly in half. Because I want these. The, that iron or this? The big iron. The big iron. Okay. Well, I wasn't sure. You got the one point. Just so that this is all nicely mixed up, I'm splitting all my leftover strips in half on the fold. And that way I can mix all my piano key pieces up when I start subcutting everything after I sew it. Okay, two more. And one more. So I'm just going to grab them in twos and sew them together. In 
in chain piecing fashion. Welcome everybody joining in. I'm hoping some of you have or was at inspired by Sunday's project and decided you wanted to make one of these too and that you're already ready to start on making your piano keyboard or two. This is a very quick sew for sure. Super quick and easy to do. Now I'm covered in little jelly roll shavings from the pinked edges. <laughs> the lighter pink one is really hard to tell if it's um, the right way or not. Take a second and press some of these back so that way they're nice and pressed. Again, it doesn't matter which way you press the seams, they can all go in the same direction if you want. That makes your life easier. And now I have sets of four. Just rolling all the seams back in one direction. But it doesn't matter which direction, just any direction. Some of these are only sets of two because there wasn't four pieces, but that's okay because we're going to be sub cutting everything anyway. It's just my iron telling me that it's hot enough for those that were curious about the beep. I know, I don't mean to be fast, guys, but I'm trying to teach a lot of things in just one video. So if I, if I could make a whole quilt in one video, at least you watch one video and on the replay, you can pause it as many times as you need. Because I do that when I watch other channels. I pause it a bazillion times. I'm like, okay, this is what they're doing. Okay, this is what they're doing. All right, so those are all pressed. Let's continue to sew more of these. Again, I'm sewing the selvage end to the selvage end, so that way they are easier to uh, trim away the trash. And yes, I do sew like this all the time when I'm doing anything with jelly rolls. 
for those that are curious as to how I just run it through the machine. Um, if you guys ever watched a jelly roll race video of mine, you'll see how I fantastically am able to line this up like this and continually so. This one can go with this one. Okay, I think I've mixed them up plenty good. And I'll still have that one remaining piece, which I can just subcut and add as needed. What's your favorite pre um, I like all pre cuts equally. I don't have a favorite. If you want to know color, purple is my favorite color, but I tend to use layer cakes. Fat quarters, jelly rolls, charm squares, the most. But charm squares I'm actually running out of because I've done so many videos for you guys that my charm packs kind of been depleted. <laughs> okay. But I use them all equally. All right, so now to press all of these. And I'm just going to keep all these in sets of two because either way we're going to be sewing them into sets of four, six, eight, twelve, you know, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to press them all and then we'll sub start sub cutting. But I think we'll have plenty of variations to choose from. These were such stretchy jelly rolls. Let me tell you, this jelly roll had, you know, they're cut selvage to selvage, but it's still very stretchy <laughs> fabric. Jane watched Tucker's video and saw you want to cry. Yes, I won a jelly roll on Tucker's last night. It was kind of funny because I was actually watching Tucker and Ian. Both, both of them are my friends, and I moderate for both their channels at the same exact time. They're both on on Mondays. So, and I can't choose one or the other. I just can't because I love both of them. So I was simultaneously watching one video on my cell phone at first, and then I was just switching back and forth to their channels. And then I decided, you know what, enough of this. I'm going to go on the computer. So I had one on the computer and one on the cell phone. <laughs> because I had to watch them both. And Tucker announced that my name right as I was switching back to his. He's like, can you guess who? Can you guess who? Well, this person is here. I know who she is, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he was making a big old funny about it. And he's like, it's Tiffany from Tiffany's Quilting Life. <laughs> I was like, oh, yay. <laughs> I thought it was funny. It was cute. Yes, he's definitely a good kid. You guys should check him out if you haven't already. And Ian is also a great one, too. So if you guys haven't checked him out. Yep, I've raced Tucker before. We did, um, we just did a charm pack race. And it was start to finish. We literally raced piecing the charm pack, then loading it on the long arm, and then quilting it and he was computerized and I wasn't and I preferred it that way because I don't have a computer anyway I wanted to race the computer myself so that's why I had him on the computerized part of his uh, uh, long arm and me on just my regular long arm because I don't have a computer it was so much fun it's worth a watch that video I 
think my iron has clogged ducts. <laughs> Possible. That's not steaming like it used to. Oh, we can clean it. Yeah, it's time for a. You do have iron cleaning videos. So you good clean cleaning. Yep, I might have to watch my video so I can remember how I do it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, this is the last one for a moment, and then we're gonna move on to sub cutting. Come on. There we go, lovely thing. Stay nice and flat. Yeah, it's definitely that way. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is move these to the side for a second. We're going to kind of over stack all these on each other, but not on each other. I'm just making sure that all the selvages are crossing a line so they can be cut equally. Just like this, because we're going to sub cut all this up now and I'm just tapering them. Nice and straight on a line I'm using the lines on my mat to do this, keeping everything nice and straight. So I can do the whole thing at once. Well, at least all the big ones, all at once. Probably not. Oh yeah, he's kind of in the camera down there. Oh, he's a big feller. All right. Let's subcut all of this. We're gonna go with, we want nice big piano key pieces. So, we're going to go with four and a half inches, which goes with the fact that I have four and a half inch squares left over of my gray, and they can be like cornerstones. So, I'm going to go ahead and sub cut into four and a half inch strips. So, and then all I have to do is piece the four and a half inch strips together and just mix up the order of them all. Kind of goes with the theme though, because the stuff in the quilt itself is four and a half inches for those corners. And then and I'll have all this left over towards something else. Come on, right there. There we go. So this is just more scrap for my scrap pile. And all this can be mixed up and sewn together. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. I'm just gonna line it up on a line. And then subcut this one into four and a half inch, and so on and so forth with all the stacks. Or all the piles. And then we'll just start mixing it all up and putting it together at the sewing machine. I should get one more off of that. That looks about four and a half inches, and it is. Yay, look at that. So that can go over there. There's four more. Let's do this one. I don't think I'll get four from it. But we're going to try as many as we can get from it. Again, I'm cutting them at four and a half inches. I think that's the best number. Oh, look at that. I'm going to get perfect amount of these. See, four and a half, I chose the best number. I'll probably get two out of these because these look about 10 inches and all I need is nine inches honestly to make two four and a half inch cuts.
And yes, I just did that math in my head on my own without asking Good. anybody. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. If you wanted to use two jelly rolls for a bigger quill, would you recommend making smaller blocks? Um, yeah, I would. But you could also, if you wanted the same strip, so on the quilt top, if you remember, if you wanted that same strip on a bigger level on all four sides, you can just have two of the same jelly rolls and hook your pieces together. That way every round you still have that same color going through. So you can just piece pieces together and that would work. So, I mean, it's up to you, it's your quilt. But yeah, you can do a couple separate blocks. You can stop at a certain um, size, like say 30 inches or something, and then make four 30 inch blocks and put them together for a larger quilt. The sky's the limit with this way of making a giant pin, uh, pineapple block. They like your new t-shirt. Thank you. That's over there. All right, two more to cut. What do I get off of this one? Will I get four and a half? Oh, yeah, duh, it looks like it. There's one from that one, and I'll probably get two from this one. Look at that. Awesome souls. I have enough pieces here, I'm pretty sure, to go all the way around. And if I don't, I can just have the corners be the gray. All right. Let's cut this one up in case we need to add some four and a half inch to it. I'm just going to cut, like, however many I can get out of here. It's a single, but it can still be thrown in as needed. There we go. So we're going to take all this now and start connecting them together. And I'm going to connect enough together to be the size of one side. So 48 inches, or 48 and a half, sorry. It was something like that. I'm just going to lay it right here so that I can lay it out and lay my piece on top once it's long enough. Or once I think it's long enough. So let's mix it all up. <laughs> I know I made a nice stack just to make a disaster. All right, here we go. I'm going to start sewing these together end to end. I'm going to chain piece them. Doesn't matter what she's gonna go where as long as they are all <laughs> mix it up. <laughs> Not really. Yep, new chair doesn't roll very well on the floor itself, so, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm getting used to that. Yeah, I don't want two of those next to each other. This quilt will be quite the size, though, once I add four and a half inches to each side. It's going to be a lot bigger. It's 48 and a half now. It's still going to be square, which I don't mind, especially if it's just a quilt that's going to sit on the couch. Oh, that's the same order as that. No, it's not. It's a totally different order. No, it's not. It's the same. Don't want the same one. Let's get those two. Come on. Grab. 
grab from the top, start adding more to them. And 48 and a half inches will come pretty quick when you sew it like this. So it'll work out beautifully. All right. Move that out of the way or I'm going to keep hitting it. So I'm kind of just finger pressing them as I'm adding the next ones. You want to know how you like your new chair. I'm loving the new chair. It's so comfy on my butt. The only thing about leather is when it's super hot summertime, I'm kind of wondering if it's going to be super sweaty hot because it's like a vinyl um, chair. And I know sitting on leather is hot in the summertime here. So sitting on vinyl is probably the same. Is it hot right now? So is it hot sitting in it? No, it's okay. fine sitting in it now. Then there you go. I said make a chair go. I can. That was your very, tell me your very first video. It was your wheelchair cup. Yep, my very first video on my channel other than removing a suture um is a wheelchair cover so i covered my wheelchair that was a long time ago Ian well said who said what said I, I can i could go get a ton of ice packs out of the freezer that go to my um cooling vest <laughs> And sit on them. I don't think they know that you have a vest that has ice packs. Yeah, I have a special cooling vest for patients with MS. They usually get one if you sign up for it. And uh, that's what I have. And the, there's like a bazillion ice packs that you fill in this vest. And most of those are in the freezer. I mainly use them on my head and my neck when I have um, a headache. I don't really use them when I have a migraine, though, because it doesn't work for migraines. But ice packing a headache actually does help. Come on. So I'm just like pulling from the end, adding, pulling from the end, adding. I'm going to add a light one. Kind of just making this big long chain pieced mess but i will eventually have to stop chain piecing them so i could see how long they're getting another one hmm? oh this one's a nail oh yep they go over here i found a uh actual sewing needle in the carpet today that I could have stepped on because I was vacuuming the house and I was like oh what the heck and it was a needle just randomly on the floor not in here not in this carpet in another area in carpet I'm like that's very weird the weirdest part is that it was a hand sewing needle and I don't hand sew I mean I do but not in the area I found that needle. All right. Yeah, you were, luckily you were shampooing the carpet. Yeah. 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 All right, let's put two long ones together now. Let's see. Put this one on this end. I'm going to start connecting the long ones together. 24 What? 24 keys will give you 48 and a half. 24. Okay. Well, I don't think any of these are at 24 yet. We're going to see, though. Because I'm going to start pulling them. And anything left over. 
could make a table topper or something. Or a pillow or a bag. I don't know. Let's see how long some of these are. Let's put these two together and let's see how many that is. That should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. You said twenty four? Hmm. Okay. So then that's too long. Seventeen. Right here. Let's see what we got going on here. What's the answer to the life of the universe and everything? What's the answer to the life of the universe? No, I don't have any answers to that. Okay. Or postcards, because he, I told him he could use his leftovers for a postcard earlier. Okay, that one was too long, but these two could go together, and that won't be too long. And then we'll start counting them. Okay, let's see. How many are on here now? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Let's do 19, 20. And then we'll do 21, 22. And then twenty three, twenty four. We'll add that to the opposite side. And then we'll lay it on there and see. Finger press that back. See, I don't pre do math. You guys are smart to do that. I don't do that. Oh, look at that. Perfect. 24 of them. Whoever did that math is great. Thank you. <laughs> all right. What do we add on this one? Let's just take all these apart. I lay them on my lap so that I can start counting. That's a long one. Awesome sauce. All right. Thank you, Pam. All right, here we go. Two. That one's already kind of long. And two more right here. Those are shorter ones. There's already four together. I need to make four of these. All right, so let's see how many are on this. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Wait, this has extra. 20, 22, 22, 23, 24. So I just hooked these two together. Look at that. Smarty. All right, here's a second side already ready. Have you ever considered teaching on the So Magical Cruise event that happens every year? Uh, nope. I don't know what One, that is. 1, 2, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So let's hook these together. 16, 17, 18, 19, no, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. this the same? That would be this one. Let's put those two together. And then all this will be extra in a minute. I forgot what number I was at, though. All right. 
I gotta recount because I forgot already. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, plus four, which is right here, plus four. I can count for you, honey. So that would be the third one. And one more. Let's see what we're at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, and then a twofer for the end, right here. And they're all mixed up. I've made four sides. Woohoo! Now I'm going to press them flat. And then all this can be used for something else. I didn't overcut because I always overcut. That's just leftovers to make something else. So let's place this up here. I'm just going to make these four rows super flat. Super flat, super flat. Let's make it super flat. Sorry, I know I'm weird. <laughs> but we love you. All right. Here's ooh. We're going to lay that right. Super flat, super flat. This row is super flat. Sorry. I know I'm getting myself a little uh, crazy. Come on. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Like I said, it doesn't matter which way your seams are pressed, because guess what? That's the back of the quilt, and nobody's going to care. It's going to be inside the quilt. They are just pressed one way or another, though. I was almost gonna. <laughs> I was almost gonna say that one way or another. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you one way. Maybe next week. I'm gonna iron you. I'll make you flat. I'll make you flat. Sorry. <sighs> this is what happens to me usually at nighttime when it's dark. It gets super weird. It must mean it's dark outside. Not yet, but soon. <laughs> Another half an hour. All right, one more. And then I'll show you guys how to sew these on. Come on. It's like every other, like, four pieces are fresh and needed to be pressed. <gasps> there we go. Worked out great. I had enough for this whole entire thing. So we're going to take two of these and hook one to each side of the quilt top. So that would be this and it doesn't matter what two sides. It's going to take two of them and put one on each side. All right. So I'm gonna lay this on here. And it should be exactly the same size. So we're gonna make sure by just going like this and go, hey look, it matches. <laughs> and we're gonna lay it on here and sew it on. I'm going to backstitch, too. And I'm going to flip that seam, too, because it's nesting with the seam of the quilt itself. No, because I'm going to put four squares on two of the ends. Three and four. You'll see. You will see what I'm doing here. 
because I didn't want to miter the corners, so or else I would have kept sewing on all four of these. I would have, you know, to miter the corners, which looks really cool on a piano keyboard. Or trust me, it does. But it's too much work right now, so I'm just, you know, doing the easy stuff. I'm making it as easy as possible. I'm also trying to make sure that all these are staying down, all these seams, the way that they're pressed. It really helps for the quilt to stay laying flat when all of your seams are sewn flat and not all wonky doodle behind everything. So it meets up with the end perfectly, just like this. Just gonna hold it with my finger as if it was a pin. to this end, back stitching, and there is one side. So I'm going to press that towards the gray because of all the seams. So it's going to take a second to do that. Just going to lay this here and press that towards the gray. I don't have the use of my whole ironing board because Sculliver is in the way. <laughs> it is too. Sculliver is blocking my ironing board over you here. Let me iron for you. That's why I'm here. What you keep me around for? All right. Now that I've gone and done one side, see, it's on there. We're going to do the opposite side. I'm going to go ahead and grab another one of these. Why wouldn't you just go down the other side? Why do the opposite? Because I don't have a cornerstone on there yet. Oh, okay. The, those two are going to get the corners. Okay, see, I'm learning too. All right, so now let's go the opposite way. And you notice that I didn't even measure each side of the quilt for this. I'm just throwing them on and they match because the most of this pretty much came out super square on Sunday. I mean, it may have one side that's going to be like an eighth of an inch off or a quarter of an inch off, but guess what? We're going to make it work. Okay. This is like perfect though. I'm going to love this. This quilt going to be awesome. It's going to be the pineapple piano. That's what I'm going to call it. The pineapple piano. <laughs> what's what's a pirouette? What is that move? A ballet move? Pirouette? 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 No, pirouette. I think it's pirouette. I think it's pirouette. Pirouette. Whatever. Pineapple piano pure whatever the word is. Somebody might know out there in YouTube world. <laughs> and then you can correct me on what it is, and that's gonna be the name of this quilt. Yeah, that's your quilt. Pirouette. I guess that's how you pronounce it. C-I-R-O-U-E-T-T-E. -E. Yep. Pirouette. And that matched perfectly. Yay! All right, side two is on. I'm going to go ahead and roll it towards the gray. I like that I did a stopping border with the gray. Come on. Roll that way. Thank you. Pineapple piano. Away. Yep. <laughs> and said pineapple apple pen. Come on. Stay up well, here. It is ballet fabric. I like the pirouette thing. Yeah, yep. Pineapple piano pirouette. I like that. I think Debbie went the name contest. <laughs> yep. Shane said that. 
All right. All right. Side two is on there. You can see. Now, these other two, we're going to take four of the leftover. Notice everything is left over from originally cutting everything. So I'm not cutting into anything new. This is everything that started with this quilt is ending with this quilt. So I'm going to go ahead and take two of these. I'm going to piece them onto this side and then the other two will go on the opposite side. I am back stitching because these are on the edge and I'm, you know, just doing it. And I'm going to grab this side and put the other two on. And the last one. This is going to be so adorable. All right, snip them apart. I have two now. So I'm going to just lay one right here on the camera. Hopefully it stays. I'm going to grab this over here next to me now. I'm going to find one of my gray ends, and that's going to be what starts right up here equal with the end of the other piano key. So we're lining up the gray with the end, and we're going to nest that seam right here, and it's just like adding a cornerstone or a corner square. And I'm going to line these up, and the other end should match. Because the center, the center itself, we're all the same size, 24 um, keys. Do solid tabs right and wrong side? Some people say they do. I honestly, no, don't think so. There are some fabrics, though, by some companies that have, I've noticed, look shinier, more brighter on the correct side, and some you can't even tell at all. So. When I pull from the bolt of a solid, uh, I just, once they're all cut up, I don't care if it's upside down, right side up, because it doesn't matter. The only one that I'd be worried about is blacks, because a, the non-correct side might be less vibrant in the black color. But white, the only thing you would notice on a white is it would be lighter, maybe. Like, you could tell if it was just one that was wrong sides, kind of like with any fabric because it'll just like stick out at you but honestly i don't think there's a difference turn this all the right direction it's twisted And you can pin if you needed to. I just don't. I have magic fingers. They act as pins. All right, so I'm going to nest this seam right here at the end. And then just sew on down. I'm just holding it in place. I want my seam to stay nested, matching up the end, back stitch, and before I get up, I'm just going to turn this whole thing around and do the opposite side. If I could find it, where did it go? It's right there. All right, again, I'm just going to match up. This lovely square right here at the end of the quilt. I'm going to nest that seam because, again, I pressed everything towards the gray and this one up towards the gray. So they should nest and line right up. Am I out of bobbin? Yep. Got to change the bobbin real quick, guys. 
the only thing that this machine doesn't have. And I think on Ian's live last night, that's what I was saying, is he found out his machine rolls the bobbin while he's sewing. He can still sew while rolling a bobbin. Cool. I can't sew while rolling a bobbin, but that would be a great thing if Juki would start doing that on their machines. Because if I try to sew while a bobbin is being rolled, if this pin right here gets stuck or moved in any way, it knocks it off the wheel and then I can't sew with it. The only way you can turn it is backwards because the pin will be stuck in the wheel. And that's what I had to fix when I took my machine apart is because somehow the bobbin thing came unpressed while the foot pedal was going and it was like trying to sew or something i don't know what it was doing but it snapped it off the place where it's supposed to sit and i had to take my machine fully apart to fix it what machine does he have that does that for him? uh i think this is a bernina pretty cool yeah i think there's other machines that do that i definitely wouldn't mind having i have to have a fast machine though i can't have a slow chug chug machine i need something that goes fast But yeah, it would be a nice feature to have on these fast jukies, is to be able to roll a bobbin. I mean, you can do that on an industrial machine. You can roll a bobbin while you sew. So that's why you want the industrial, huh? Yeah, I want the industrial because I want to be able to sew all sorts of stuff, though, and not have to use this machine for it anymore. Not necessarily sewing fast, but it does so fast, just because I want an industrial. Yeah. The one that I've been looking at, that I've been eyeballing, that I want either for my birthday or Christmas, that I'm probably not going to get because, you know, things come up in life. But the one that I do want is, um, it rolls bobbins, it's a Juki, while sewing. I would I would be fine without a thread cutter. I know that they don't have them on the industrials. And the ones that do are super duper expensive. Alright. All I need to do is press it and this top is done. I will probably do a stay stitch around it though, which it means I will stitch all the way around the whole entire edge of the quilt about an eighth of an inch away from the edge and the reason for that is because this is a lot of open seams at the end and i don't want them coming open if that makes any sense to anybody i call it a stay stitch it's great to do if you have a long armor and you take your quilts to a long armor especially if you have all these open seams right here all these edge seams like this it's good to do a stay stitch. I love it when my clients send their quilts that have stay stitches around them because then nothing falls apart and I don't have to worry about it being my fault if it does because it's their fault for not stay stitching if they don't. I do it to my own quilts even because they get shown so many times. Okay. There's one. Flip it over and do the other side. This thing grew. It's almost as big as my ironing board, which is 64 inches. So that means this thing is just shy by like six inches, maybe. I'm just guessing because I'm really sloppy at math. But. Like a basting stitch. Yes, it's like a kind of like a basting stitch, but it's just a stitch that you do. And I'm going to show you guys because I'm going to do it to this. Because this is going to get probably hung up for a while because I won't be quilting it at this very exact time. We need to find a backing for it. Yep. I need something cutesy to back it with. Oh my goodness. Come on. Plus, it helps to, when you stay stitch. I'll show you why I stay stitch. See how I'm holding it right now to show it? So there it is. You can see all the way around. 
But the more you keep holding your quilts up, if you have a bunch of seams on the edge like this, this is where a stay stitch will help because I'm yanking on it to hold it open or else it just looks like this if you don't yank on it. You gotta kinda give it a little, you know, pull. But what I do to make sure that none of this falls apart is I quickly sew all the way around the whole entire of the quilt. Because this is it, I'm done. I'm not adding any more to it. This is how it's going to end. I'm gonna change my stitch length and I'm just gonna zoom on down all the way around, right at the edge, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. I know I'm wasting thread, some would say, but I'm also saving myself from having it fall apart between now and the long, arms or long arm quilting process, or any quilting process. What did I what? What did he change what link to? My stitch length. My stitch oh, length, length is, it's at a three. I put it at a three. Okay. Side two is done. Just going to turn it. Do side three. And I'm glad I'm doing this because so far there's been about two that seem like they're coming loose. Because remember, I stitched them and then subcut them. So that means some of these, if it wasn't the end of the stitching where it was cut off, it's, you know, right there. And it could be taking the chances of falling out. But all long armors that I know 100% love when their clients do this prior to sending the quilt. Well, you are longer, so yep. Like, you know, yep. You guys don't real. some people don't realize how much I have to fondle quilts before they get even loaded on the long arm because I lay it out in here to think of what I want to quilt on it because I do all the quilting manually so I have to have a design in my head. And then I move it from in here to the living room. Some of them I end up having to press because in shipping, like it was folded in the package so long that it is got so many creases that I iron it out. So obviously I'm moving it there too, you know. I'm adjusting it on the long arm a bazillion times until it's perfectly flat. I'm pulling it out to make sure it's laying or if I'm pinning it to the bar so that I can roll it up. I mean, we move the quilts around a lot. We definitely don't want to have to take it off the frame to stitch seams that have been broken open. All right, and there it is. I sewed all the way around, about an eighth of an inch from the edge, so none of these seams, now that I'm yanking, are going to come apart. <laughs> Teresa says not many of them do that either. She always has to fix them. Before yeah, I always, I fix, there's a couple that I've fixed. I've also had to fix fallen apart seams which I don't mind because if I catch them before I start quilting, it's easier. But sometimes I don't catch the seams until I'm quilting and then they get glued. So if you guys had me long arm for you or you want me to long arm for you, just know that I do glue seams closed and then I stitch with the long arm over it. So they usually stay. Yes. There it is. I'm trying to make it where you can see the whole thing. There we go. Can you see it? Piano key border. There we have it. So it's the pineapple piano pirouette. 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 Whatever. Yes, pirouette. 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 Piano pirouette. <laughs> oh, I and love how it. How big is it? Teresa asked earlier. All right. It is. Oh, there it is. Tapey measure. 
need to fold it in half, I think. Nope. I'm just going to lay right here and go, that's that. Okay. It is 58 inches. And obviously 58 inches the opposite it's direction. Kind of a rough guess, though. Yeah, well, it's a, about 58 inches. You want me to hold the side? No, I got it. It's good. It's good. It's okay. about 58 inches. Square. 58 inches square. It is so adorable. Look at that. I love it. I love the giant pineapple block. I love that the ends uh, that I did that first stopping border so that kind of like gives that corner like that last final look. It's amazing. Now it makes me like the fabric. I didn't like the ballet fabric completely because I don't do ballet. But I like it now. It looks amazing. Because it's a giant pineapple block. So there it is. That's how it's done for all of you who wanted to know what a piano key border was. That's what it is. Or at least it's like an optical illusion. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's really cool. The way it just ends like that. It's like it's just floating off at the end. Like the ballet. It's just floating off at the end. <laughs> yep. It's pretty awesome. I like it. All right. Any questions? Anybody have anything? Whew. I'm all hot and sweaty. I missed it. Bria. Wonderful quilt. So I hopefully you guys make this quilt. So I made this on Sunday. Uh, after the video is over, I'll put the link to So Sunday's video in the description of this video. So that way it's easier to find it so that you can know how the center was created to put your border on if you decide to make this in the future. Don't forget if you make it, post it in the Facebook group if you guys haven't joined that. Scotty will put a link in there for you guys if you haven't joined the group. Don't forget to answer the questions though or you won't get in because my group got spammed recently hundred requests of funkiness people with some weren't quilters obviously they were just dumb weird facebook profiles or something so i try to like make sure you guys answer the questions to join and if you want to share it on instagram you can just hashtag it tiffany's quilting life and i'll see it there too anyway that's it that's all i got i'm done how much of the gray material did you use Oh, I gave myself a two yard allowance and I only used, so here's what's left over. Hold on, I'll tell you exactly how much I use. I literally have 33 inches left. So I used a yard and 36, 38, 39. I used like 40 inches of fabric. So a yard and a couple inches. So a yard and a quarter will cover it. How about that? Because your leftover pieces from the original six cuts from the center part are the cornerstones now. So, and plus I still have, you know, this could probably just be used for another quilt because I always give myself an allowance for stuff. So here it already is. And then you'll still have some leftovers from the jelly roll strips so you could put them all together and put a strip down the cent center of the back, which I think that's what I might do is just do a strip down the center of the back with all those leftovers. That'll be fun. Is there a pattern? No, the pattern is verbal visual in So Sunday's video, and this was verbal visual as well. This That's was kind cool. of easy. Everything I do on my page, for those that are new to my channel, sorry, I have fuzz. If you're new to my channel and don't know, all of my videos are my patterns. I do not write my patterns. I do have EQ8. I do have the program. I don't know how to use it properly. And I don't like to write. And I have no time to sit and write the pattern. I'm not going to do it. You guys just get it right here out of my mouth and in video form. Well, we don't delete any of the videos. Yeah, and so I don't delete my videos. They're always available. At your own leisure. Whatever yep. you want. Yep, most of the fans that do follow the patterns, for those of you that are new, they do actually sit and pause it, write it down, then press play. Then they sit and pause it, and they write it down, and then press play. 
as I'm giving out the directions. It's usually the first watch that they'll write it all down and the second watch they'll put it together. So, yeah. All right, everyone, I'm going to say goodbye. You could use the rest of it for the binding. Yes, I can. That's probably what some of it will go for is binding it. So, all right, I'm going to get going. Thank you guys for all hanging out. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to give me some thumbs up. And don't forget to check out my friends that are highlighted in blue with the wrenches. They all have their own channels. Well, some of them, as well as a couple others that are in there. They have channels, too. So, Are you going to use the leftover triangles on the back? I have no idea what I'm going to use with the leftover triangles yet. I just know I will put a strip down the center with these. Whatever fabric I choose, it's going to go with all this. So we'll see when I put it together how it goes. It might make a big plus sign on the back. Who knows? That would be Anyways. Cool. That would work. Bye, everybody. Have a great night. Good night.